One of the biggest challenges that we could face as wildlife photographers is, is actually going out and finding the wildlife to photograph. They're generally hard to spot, but if we can identify their tracks and signs that they leave behind in the countryside, then that can make our life as a wildlife photographer that little bit easier and help us to get close to our subjects and get the images that we're after. What I want to do in this video is share with you my knowledge and my experience of tracks and signs of UK mammals. What we'll do is we'll actually look at four mammals. We'll look at fox, badger, roe deer and the hare. We'll look at the tracks, we'll look at the signs and then what we'll do is I'll share with you some top tips along the way. Okay, tip number five in tracks and signs is all to do with research. It can be quite a complex subject if you're a complete beginner like <laughs> like everybody is, I suppose, at some stage, um, it can be quite a lot to take in. So you need to get your, your research straight. Things like, obviously, because you're watching on YouTube, that's a good start. Uh, I would also recommend this book, Tracks and Signs. You can get it on Amazon. And also a nice leaflet from the Mammal Society here in the UK. And what I've done with this, it's got all the tracks and signs in it. And what I've done is I've scanned it and I put it onto my mobile phone. So all the tracks and signs from that leaflet are scanned onto my phone, which I take out into the field with me. So what do we mean by tracks and signs? Well, tracks are an imprint which is left behind in the soil, snow or mud or other ground surface by an animal walking across it. Signs are basically evidence which has been left behind by an animal that can then lead you to identify it. Things like the calls, burrows, leftover males, territorial marking, foreign feathers, droppings and tracks. Animal tracks come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, however, it is very quite rare that you're going to get a perfect print. The be best conditions to find tracks in are things like fresh snow or shallow mud following rain. It's important to, to to know the makeup and the shape of uh, an animal print. Most tracks you'll come across are mainly from domestic animals, namely dogs, so it's important to be able to tell the difference. And here we have the basic outline of a, a basic track, and it's made up of the claws on the tips, toe pads, and then you have the palm pad at the bottom. They're the three basic parts of a track. Okay, tip number four in tracks and signs is equipment. I carry a, a small kit with me um, when I'm out looking for tracks and signs. Very important piece of kit. It's my phone, as I previously said. I've got all my prints, tracks, drop-ins, etc. All scanned onto my phone. Nice and lightweight, can carry it in, in my, my, my pocket. Other things to think about, maybe things like a ruler for measuring. Although I do know that my phone measures six inches or 150 mil by 75 mil. I also take trail cameras with me. Um, if I find really good fresh signs then I'll put a trail camera out onto it. The red fox can be found in both urban and in rural uh, environments. However, the, the woodland fox is a, a very wary animal and it just will not put up with any human disturbance at all whatsoever. The crepuscular, so your best chances you're going to get of actually seeing a fox is probably first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. Even if you don't see one, the tracks and signs can still give their presence away. The fox and the dog are both closely related and their tracks are very similar. And that's why I showed you the, the, the dog track previously. It's the most common track that you're going to find out there and it's one you really need to get to know to be able to tell the difference. With a fox track, generally it's smaller than most dogs and it measures about 35 by about 50 millimetres and it has a narrow point. If you look at the fox track itself, you can actually draw an imaginary line through the track that doesn't touch any parts of the pad and that's shown on this diagram here. Bottom pad on the fox is more of a chevron type shape and it's much smaller than the, the, the dogs. And a fox's toes are thinner and straighter than a dog.
When it comes to drop-ins for the Fox, you, you'll normally find them on a, a prominent point. What they'll do is they'll deposit the drop-ins on uh, a molehill or a grass tussock to mark the territory. The size varies, but it's approximately 100 mil by about 20 mil. They're very dark when they're fresh and they're twisted in appearance. And they contain mainly fur and feathers. However, during the summer and early autumn, foxes will feed on berries uh, and they're pretty prominent in the, in the droppings at that time of year. But the one thing about the fox dropping is it is a very musky smell. Foxes mark the territory with both droppings and urine. And once you've, you, once you've smelt it, um, it's a smell you'll never forget. And this is just a, a quick short video of a, a fox marking its territory. Okay, over my shoulder here, there, hopefully you will see the entrance to a fox's den or a fox's earth, as it can sometimes be known as well. It's freshly dug out soil, hole in the, the, the top of the embankment, classic place that a, a fox would have its den. This is only about a matter of, I would think, 20, 30 metres away from the fox's den that I've just showed you, and over the shoulder here. There's another one. Again, top of a bank. Classic place that you'll find them. Foxes generally only use their dens as, as nurseries and they often spend a lot of their time actually resting outside. Um, the fox has a number of different calls, but the one which is the most common and you'll often hear at night um, is this one here. One other really good telltale sign of the, the, the fox is feathers. Um, a bird which has been killed by a fox uh, is normally eaten on the spot. Uh, it will have its feathers sheared and crushed at the base. Whereas if you come across a pile of feathers where the bird has actually been killed by a bird of prey, like a sparrowhawk, the feathers will be complete, they'll be whole. That's because the, the bird of prey will, will pluck the feathers out. Here in the UK we have six species of deer who've all got similar tracks which can make it really difficult to tell apart, although size can be a clue. Deer have hooves which leave two long imprints with a gap in between. The roe deer which we're going to look at, the tracks are about 30 by about 45 millimetres and they look like an upside down heart shape when they're, when they're actually walking. Roe deer when they're travelling at speed, the hooves are, are more widespread and the dew claws are normally only visible on very soft ground. And here we have what I would call a runway. As you can see in the ground, the foreground moves out straight across the field and into that wood. Now, that would give me an indication that this is being used by deer, probably. I have seen roe deer footprints. Okay, this is the opposite end of the trail that I've seen coming through this this field uh, and hopefully you can pick it out lots of deer prints and I believe possibly a badger as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a trail camera out I've got one at that end and I'm going to put one at this end We just saw how important pathways are to animals moving around the countryside. When it comes to deer droppings, um, they're all kind of similar in shape, but again, like the, the, the tracks, the different size, depending on the size of the animal or the deer. With roe deer, the droppings are normally black in colour when they're fresh. They're short, cylinder shaped, usually with a point on the end, and there's no obvious smell to them. When it comes to resting, roe deer um, will actually bed down. Um, or, or, or lie down. What they'll do is they'll, they'll clear a small area on the ground um, which they'll then lie on to rest at. Roe deer do have a call um, and they bark and it's very similar to a dog but again 
you'll normally hear this first thing in the morning or later in the evening and it's usually used when the roe deer are disturbed to give an alarm. Okay, tip number three in tracks and signs is to do with the time of day. Um, as I keep saying, most mammals are the most active first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening, and that's not really the time of day you want to be going out looking to, to find tracks and signs because all you're going to do is you're going to disturb them. Best time I would suggest is probably around about midday, and what that does, it means that any scent that you're going to leave a presence of, um, any sounds you're going to make, etc., it's just not going to be around when the deer are actually active. So I would suggest that midday is the best time of day to go out looking for tracks and signs. What I want to do now is just take a little time out just to give you a look forward to my major project that I'm working on this year and that's badgers. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a three part video together on how to find badgers, watching badgers and photographing badgers. So look forward to my three part series on badgers. Next we move on to the badger. The badgers are nocturnal meaning that they're most active at night. When it comes to the, the tracks, the badger, uh, badgers have got five toes. Um, the toe pads are almost all in a row. Um, the forefoot is very long and, the and, and it's got long claws and the claws themselves cannot be retracted. So they are normally always seen in a badger track. And the palm pad is broad and it's kidney shaped. When it comes to the badger's droppings, badgers are very clean animals and they'll deposit their droppings in latrines outside their sets, but they will also at times mark their territory with their droppings. Um, badger droppings are quite large in size, they're up to 10 centimetres long and 2 centimetres wide. They're black and brown in colour, uh, they're sausage shaped, forming a, a pile, um, and they're large, larger than a fox's, and they're not twisted. One place and one telltale sign for a badger to look out for is around low-lying obstacles like fen uh, fences, walls, bramble, hawthorn, especially along pathways which can give away a badger's presence as they can catch their hair on the obstacles. The badger hair itself is white and it's got a black tip. One clear giveaway for the badger is a thing which is known as a snuffle hole. Um, most badger food is found either lying on the ground or just underneath the, the, the ground surface things like earthworms. Badgers will thoroughly cover an area using their snouts to try and uncover that food. In doing so they'll leave small holes known as snuffle holes um, which can be seen um, normally about 50 to 70 millimeters in the di diameter and about 25 to 75 millimeters deep. Badgers have um, a wide variety of calls um, and it's certainly some of them you don't want to you wouldn't want to hear if you were walking through a dark wood on your own and and here's just a, a small selection of what they sound like pretty creepy i was out walking in the early evening and i noticed there was a depression in the ground it's quite flat it was obviously it was a it was an animal track and when i had a closer look at it it actually led me to a dry stone wall. And at the dry stone wall, I could see clearly where it was leveled down. And that's highlighted in yellow in this photograph. And I thought, I wonder what that is. And the only thing that I could think about was badgers. And I could see that leading from the wall, there was a track. Again, the ground was depressed, um, where obviously the, 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 the low body of the badger had, had come across. And there was two tracks leading from it. So I positioned my camera over that location, left it overnight, came back the next day and this is the film that I got. Okay, tip number two in tracks and signs is library. Um, I think it's a great idea for you to make up your own little library so that you can keep control and, and manage all the tracks and the signs that undoubtedly you're going to photograph, you're going to catalogue um, and that will help you to trail mammals out in the field 
and always a great idea also to download stuff onto your phone so it's right at hand when you're out in the field so put yourself a little library together moving on to the last mammal that we're going to look at and that is the brown hare they're the fastest land mammal in the UK and they can reach speeds of up to about 45 miles an hour I did a previous video on how to photograph hares and I'll leave a link to that at the end the tracks of a hare can sometimes be very difficult to find but the front hot, the front part of a, a hare track is, is normally pointed there's normally only four of the five paws which will be shown and that depends on how soft the ground is on hard ground only the the claws will show and as I said normally paws will only show on soft ground the hind legs are long and when they're traveling at speed they will often actually fall in front of or on the front feet these fields that are behind me here are absolutely ideal country for for countryside for hares and I know that there are hares in this area so what I'm going to try and do now and hare tracks are pretty difficult to actually find so what we're going to do is we're going to have a walk along here and around the fields it's the middle of the day so the, the hares are, are well down I won't disturb them um, and we'll see what we can find again I've got evidence here that hares moved along this line so they're definitely in this field somewhere probably line up her forms in the hedgerow having followed the, the hair tracks that i've just found along the edge of that field um it's led me into an opposite field i'm going to walk along the hedgerow and as soon as i've got in here i've found evidence of hares forms now hares unlike rabbits who live underground hares don't live underground they live on the surface and the rest in what's known as a form so what i'm going to do now is try and find good form to show you exactly what a hair form looks like and here we have a hair's form you can see when it's excavated some dirt out and it's actually constructed this shallow hole in the edge of the banking on the edge of the field so this is a hair's form where it will rest up out of the wind and out of the rain when it comes to the brown hair's droppings they leave um clusters of little round hard balls usually yellow brown in color or green and full of grass hair droppings are bigger and they're flatter than uh, a rabbit's droppings whereas the rabbits will leave a cluster or a pile of droppings hares tend to leave them in much smaller numbers hares do have a call and it's much more of a, a, a loud scream which is made mainly as an alert or alarm Tip number one on tracks and signs is all to do with patience. Learning all about tracks and signs can be a long term process, um, but with patience to keep learning, it can be very rewarding for wildlife photographers. What you can find under your feet can lead you to great opportunities to get close to wildlife and with patience, get the images that you're after. So tip number one, tracks and signs, patience, stick at it. Okay, thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and Tracks and Signs. I hope you've enjoyed it. I always say that I really enjoy making these videos and it's always a learning experience for me. And certainly tracks, tracks and Signs has been one big steep learning curve for me, um, but I truly believe it's helped me improve my overall approach to photographing wildlife here in the UK. All I would ask is that if you've liked it, could you hit the like button? Could I always ask you to subscribe to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, doesn't cost anything. And again, it helps me to promote the channel and share my experiences of photographing wildlife here in the UK. So, until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.